Hi, I'm Darren Hefty. I farm north of Sioux Falls, South Dakota with my brother, Brian. We farm about 2,500 acres. We used agriculture liquid fertilizer on a new piece of ground that I got this year, and it was really kind of exciting to see some of the different trials that we did. I bought a new piece of ground. It's about a 60 acre field, and it's really hilly. I've got elevation change of about 73 feet on a 60 acre field. Uh, so it's, it's more rolly than most of the ground we've got. We do have some flat ground and, and some river bottom ground, that kind of thing. Uh, but we thought this field would be interesting because the soil tests were absolutely amazing. They were so poor. Uh, this particular piece of ground had been cash rented for 25 to 30 years and they weren't leaving any extra fertilizer out there for me. So when we first did a soil test, the worst test in my field came off one of the hillier parts of the field where I had four parts per million of available phosphorus on my Olsen test, and I had 42 parts per million of potassium and 0.7% potassium in my base saturation. Now, if those numbers don't mean anything to you, uh, that's not very much fertility out there. I had basically about eight pounds of phosphorus per acre that were gonna come available from my soil. The rest I was going to need to put on. And that's a big deal. I was raising a corn crop this year and I plan to be continuous corn for next year. And corn takes about 76 pounds of phosphate to raise 200 bushels. So if I'm starting with eight, that really doesn't leave me very much to get going on. So with this particular field, the big challenge for me was how do I get that fertility out there and how do I get it in an available form? Because my pH is as high as 8.4 in parts of this field. So the way that I chose to do that was with ProGerminator. Now ProGerminator has flavanol technology to prevent tie up of that nutrient for about 60 days, maybe a little better. And for my corn, that's really what I needed. I needed to get a good early start and have plenty of phosphorus in that plant by the time I got to tasseling. We've got some high pH areas in our farm where we're seeing calcium tying up that phosphorus. So even though we're putting lots out there, it's not necessarily getting into our crop. With ProGerminator, we can use much lower use rates than 1034O, and we aren't putting all that salt in our furrow, so it's safer for our crop as well. We're seeing a great financial return. We're also seeing a positive yield impact, switching acres from 1034O to 924.3 ProGerminator with Flavanol technology. So this year we used about five gallons of ProGerminator in combination with five gallons of SureK to meet my potassium needs. It was interesting when we first started planning how we're gonna do this field compared to some of the other fields on our farm, we we're gonna use some dry PNK on other fields and then compare them to using liquid products on this field. Now some of our other ground is definitely better than this particular piece of ground is in terms of what the soil tests show for available nutrients for this year. And my piece of ground, I have nothing out there that I'm gonna be able to pull out of that soil. I mean, relatively close to nothing. So everything that I need, I'm gonna to have to put out there myself. And that's why I wanted highly available forms of fertilizer. Now I also put a half a gallon of Micro 500 out here. Uh, in some parts of the field, we put a little bit more micros. And the reason why my micro tests were astronomically low. Uh, my zinc test, for example, the lowest test that a soils lab will show you is 0.1 parts per million. That's the lowest level they can show. And that's exactly what I had on one of my soil tests in my field. So I'm not sure if I actually had uh, one part per 10,000 out there of zinc, or if that was just a gift that the soils lab gave me, but I really needed to put some micros out as well. And the results that we saw this year were great. Uh, we took a lot of pictures during the summer because we just couldn't believe how good the crop growth was. And in fact, I walked through every inch of this field during the growing season, and I did not see plant nutrient deficiencies out here on a field where last year the renter that had the ground had soybeans, and I saw visible potassium deficiency symptoms in his soybeans. So I knew my corn was gonna have a big problem with potassium uptake, and early season and mid season, I really didn't see anything at all for nutrient deficiencies. On the potassium side, We've used potash for many years, and the challenge with using potash is every two years in a corn and soybean rotation, if you're getting 200 bushel corn and 60 bushel soybeans, you need to be putting 250 pounds of potash out in your ground to get the nutrients back that you're removing with your crop. That's just way too much chlorine salt to be putting out on my ground. That's 100 pounds of chlorine salt every two years in a corn soybean rotation. I'm not gonna do that. 
I'm using liquid Shirke on my farm. Shirke is made with flavanol technology so that potassium doesn't get tied up in the soil. Instead, most of that potassium is getting right into my plants and we're seeing it on our plant tissue analysis. Shirke has been a great product for me. That's the only potassium I'll use on my farm. Now in 2010, my yield goal that I had was 150 and we hit it. We averaged a little over 150 bushels per acre across the farm but a good share of the farm went 175 bushels plus, as you can see by my yield map. So there were some really good areas out in the field. The challenge for me is fixing some of those tougher areas. So where I've had soil erosion over the years, I'm working on using the full ag liquid program to try and get as much nutrition into my crop as I can. And every year as I raise a, a nutritionally sound crop, those nutrients are gonna break down in my field again as I leave the residue in the field. So it's important for me to do as little tillage as possible and feed my crop well. One of the ways that we monitored what our plants were able to take in for nutrients throughout the season was to do plant tissue analysis. Now we had a few different trials in the field. We used 10 gallons of a 50-50 mix of Pro Germinator and Sure-K. Then we used 15 gallons in furrow and then we used 20 gallons in furrow. So that's 10 gallons of Pro Germinator and 10 gallons of Sure-K. And we wanted to see if we saw any uh, injury to the roots, how much uh, nutrient each level was pushing into that plant, and of course we were interested in the yield data in the fall to see if, well, is the 10 gallon rate enough because uh, that's what our local rep was recommending, or would 15 or 20 be better? And a lot of times we think, you know, with plant nutrition, oh, if I put on more, I'm for sure going to get more yield. Uh, but there has to be some point where you don't get an economic return, where the fertilizer costs you as much as your yield gain is going to get you. And, and that's what we were kind of looking for on this field because I'm not going to be satisfied with 150 bushel yield for the next 10 years. I want that yield to be moving up. I want to be at 200 bushel, maybe two and a quarter or even a little better uh, as we move into the next five or 10 years. So when we're doing the plant tissue analysis, uh, the, best, the best results we saw were at the 10 gallon and 15 gallon rates. And for some reason at the 20 gallon rate, uh, we did see it tail off just a little bit on some of the nutritional levels at various stages early in the growth season. And part of that reason we felt is that, you know, we had to reach that saturation point where we had plenty of nutrients and maybe even where plant nutrients aren't gonna be my limiting factor anymore. And in many cases in my field, uh, drainage issues and a low level of organic matter that didn't hold moisture very well or hold uh, a good base of nutrients, those things ended up being my yield limiting factors. So my 10 gallon rate ended up being the best economically for me and we could just see it all through the year. 10 and 15 gallons were great in furrow and I wouldn't say that we saw visible crop injury with any of the rates. And that's really what shocked some of my neighbors is, what, you're putting 15 gallons of liquid product in furrow? And I said, yeah, this stuff is really low salt. We've been using it on our farm for a few years now at lower rates but now I wanted to try it on a field that had no fertility and we're using it at high rates. Uh, so I feel very comfortable with the agriculture liquid products that they aren't gonna hurt your root system, uh, even at some of the higher rates. Now for 2011 and this cropping season, we're gonna do most of the farm at that 10 gallon rate where we're blending 50-50 uh, ratio of ProGerm and SureK. Uh, and that's really what my soil test is calling for. It's calling for uh, good amounts of both of those nutrients, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm also going to be using Micro 500 uh, up to one gallon per acre in some of these areas because I really feel like I need to build up some of those micronutrient levels. Uh, my plant tissue analysis, again, if we look back at that, showed that I was low in boron and zinc in parts of my field, and I just want to be very aware of that, that I had some severe erosion problems in this farm before I owned it. I don't want to have that problem again and I know that I have to build up for some of the mistakes that have been made out here in previous years. So I'm going to be adding more of that this year. The other things that I'm gonna be looking at, again, I'm gonna do a rate study. Uh, I'm mainly gonna focus on that 10 versus 15 gallon rate uh, and see as I push my yields up, uh, is that 15 gonna pay a little bit more? I felt last year in the good parts of my field, the 15 gallon rate definitely paid. In some of the poorer areas of the field, of course, I didn't need quite as much nutrition in those areas. Uh, so the 15 gallon rate didn't pay, but we're gonna try it out in some of the good part of the farm uh, just to see what happens. The other thing that I'm trying new for 2011 is the new sulfur product that Agriculture Liquid has called Access. Now each gallon of Access delivers about five pounds of sulfur to my crop. So in the past we had been using ammonium thiosulfate. 
when we're spraying our pre-emerge herbicide or when we're putting liquid nitrogen on. Uh, this year we're going to be using access in place of that. So when I'm putting on uh, my liquid nitrogen early in the season, I'm going to put some access with that uh, and try and meet my sulfur needs. Then I'm planning on side dressing a little bit more uh, nitrogen later on in the season because my soils just can't hold that all in one time. I get a lot of questions about that. Well, how much nitrogen can I put on at one time? It's not really the form of nitrogen you use. It's what holding capacity your soil has. We look at the cation exchange capacity on our soils, and there are parts of my field that are as low as 12 to 14 on the cation exchange capacity. Typically, we use a figure of 10 times the cation exchange capacity as the amount of nitrogen that we can hold in our soils at any one time. So for me, with a cation exchange capacity as low as 12 or 14, I want to put on 100 pounds or a little better with my pre-emerge herbicides. Then I'm going to save the rest and put on at side dress time when my soils can hold it. I'm trying to increase my cation exchange capacity by increasing my organic matter and my holding capacity in that soil. And as I do that, I'm going to raise continuous corn at least for a few years to try and get that big root mass that corn produces to try and increase that organic matter. And in my farm this fall, what I plan to do is do some strip till. Now we have been doing some strip till, like this year we did strip tillage in the fall, but we decided we were going to put all our plant nutrition out in the spring at planting time in furrow. But next year for the 2012 crop, what I plan to do is put about 10 gallons of that Pro Germinator Surecane mix in my strip tillage machine and put it down about, say, six inches deep, maybe a little deeper in my soil. And then next spring, in the spring of 2012, I'll put five gallons of that Pro Germinator Sure K and Micro 500 mix right in at planting time and try and meet my nutritional needs that way. Overall, on our farm, we've been very satisfied with agriculture liquid. We've been very happy with Pro Germinator and Sure K that we've used for years and Micro 500 as well. This year, we're excited about using the new Access product. We've been really happy with the research that we've seen on that. 2012 looks to be a great year for our farm. Our profitability chances have never been better. So we're really going to go for it, and we're using agriculture liquid on our farm.